What's up guys, it's Tony Holiday, and today I wanna to talk to you about buses and busing in Logic Pro. I wanna to talk to you about what buses are, how they work, and why you should start incorporating them into your mixing stage of your tracks. Buses are extremely useful when it comes to grouping tracks together or putting effects on multiple different individual tracks, and I'm gonna show you all how to do that today in Logic Pro. So what is a bus exactly? Well, a bus essentially holds individual tracks and routes them to one output. So you can add effects onto one track, which then affects all the different tracks that are contained within that bus. You can also use a bus uh, for audio effects. So you could put one reverb on a bus and then send uh, individual tracks to that bus. So that way you don't have to stack multiple reverbs, delays, and other audio effects when you are making your tracks. This is especially useful for when you're doing large projects and you're gonna be using the same effects over and over and over again. So let's jump into Logic. I'm gonna show you how to use buses effectively, what they are, and why you should start incorporating them into your tracks. But yeah, let's get into the video. So as you can see here, guys, I just have a little track here and these are actually color coded for a reason, which I'll go over in just a second. So the top three here are kind of like the chords portion of the main track here. The pink are the two leads, which is a very small part of the little loop here. The purple is gonna be the bass and the blue is guitar and the bottom, the yellow is a drum bus. And you can see that's labeled bus already. And there is this little arrow which definitely indicates a drop down. I'm gonna go over all of this and how a bus works and why that is the way it is in just a second here. So I've already made this track or loop rather, um, just to showcase this. And I'll show you how to create a bus so that each of these different groups is actually put under one bus track. The top three here, the chords, let's just play this as a solo to get started and then we'll go from there. So it's just kind of like two chords uh, sections here and then the stab section, which is just like some subtle little kind of strings type thing. The lead I'll play for you really quick. It's this rain harp that I've doubled up. The bass section here. I think I used Rickenbacker bass for that. And the guitar. And the drum bus here. The drums are pretty simple. I mean, everything's actually pretty simple here, but I just wanted to showcase how you can group these tracks into buses. So let's actually start with the drum bus here because it's already in a bus. I'll show you what's contained there. So as you can see the little drop down arrow here on the side, if you click that, you can see all of the different um, single tracks that I've made into this drum bus. So for example, if I was to solo the shaker, you can hear that, the kick, just like a little four on the floor at 105 BPM. And so all of these individual tracks, no matter which one I have soloed, you'll see the drum bus actually has an output as well. So, or if I go down to the kick here, or the shaker. All of these tracks that I'm highlighting here are all routed to have their output through the drum bus. Now you might say to yourself, why would I wanna do that? That's kind of seems pointless. Why would you want to have everything go through one output? Well, it kind of gets easier as you get on. Let's say you had a project of a hundred tracks. If you're gonna adjust certain things in the track, like the bass, for example, it's much easier for you to adjust the bass section or a portion of the bass section with a bus versus going in and doing something like selecting the tracks, adjusting the volumes, selecting the tracks, adjusting the volumes, or adding 20 of the same EQ, um, the same parameters and everything, but 20 EQ plugins. It's gonna take up more CPU load. It's not ideal in this situation. So we can route it to one output, in this case, the drum bus. So if I solo the drum bus and play this, you'll be able to hear all those different drum tracks. And they're all routed through the drum machine designer, which is the drum bus. When you create a brand new drum machine designer, it automatically makes it as a bus. And then you have the option to actually separate each drum uh, track as like by note pitch. 
So then you can do individual effects on each track. But for the bulk of them, what you can do is add things like a compressor onto the DMD, you know, fat effects, channel EQ, things like that. If we create a DMD, it automatically comes as a bus because it knows we're probably gonna be adding more than one drum element. But what about things like guitar or the bass here, or the leads or the chords? Well, I'll show you how you can make those into a bus here. Logic has this thing called track stacks and a track stack is exactly the same as a bus. It's just the Logic way of putting it. So let's say we wanted to do it for these chords here. So if I press S and solo those, they're all individual. So if I go and play this one, that's just a single part, this part, but we wanna route them all to the same output. So we can highlight the tracks there by clicking one and going all the way to the one we want. So chords two, hold shift and click, then right click the track and go create track stack. And we're gonna do summing stack for now. We're not gonna worry about folder stack too much for the moment. Now, as you can see, this creates up here what's called chords bus. Now yours will probably just be called instrument one or something like that. I actually already had these in a bus before I made this tutorial. And then I did what's called flattening the stack. So I got rid of the bus, um, but it's just remembering the bus that I had made and actually creating the track ahead of it again. But now, as you can see, all of these different tracks here have the output here at bus 33. And if we open up our mixer and we find chords bus, you can see that the input here is B33 or bus 33. All three of these are now being routed to the one output of the chords bus. So if I just solo the chords bus, it'll play these three tracks. So we can actually do that for the leads, the bass, the guitar, and all the things like that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna create for the leads, create track stack, summing stack, and I labeled it as lead bus. The bass, create track stack, perfect. Guitar, create track stack, summing stack. So rather than having 30 tracks, we put them all into groups, and now we have only five outputs that we need to deal with. For example, let's say we're in a mixing stage here. We've done kind of our mix in general for the drums as to how we want it cohesively to be, but then how does that sit versus the other tracks? Let's say in this one, we want to actually make the drums louder, so we can highlight all of these and turn them down to make the drums louder. So watch this. <laughs> Now from here, if we want to make the chords maybe a bit louder, we can just grab the chords bus. That also goes for things like audio effects. So if I'm highlighted on the chords bus here, you can see I have a compressor, an RC20, and a channel EQ, and some other buses that I'm sending to, which I'll go over in just a moment. This is really useful as well, because I'm not gonna to wanna to add a compressor onto each of these singular tracks with the same parameters to compress it just the right amount. It's a waste of time. Same thing with EQ. If I wanna make room for the kick drum or the bass, so I'm gonna be taking out some of the lower frequencies, I don't wanna add a channel EQ on every track. I would rather just go to the chords bus and add one channel EQ here and do one sweep of everything below 120 hertz. Now, if I play this, you can see this entire thing here, the chords bus, is the output of all of the three tracks underneath it and there is no, nothing under 120 hertz that is going through that output, which leaves room for the kick drum. If I solo that. Obviously just the levels and everything aren't quite right because I just messed with them there, but you get the kind of gist of what I'm saying there. The same thing goes with effects like an RC20. RC20 is like a lo-fi kind of audio effect plugin, which gives it kind of flavors and colors of something that would be previously used in you know, lo-fi music or vinyl based music. So rather than me adding an RC20 onto each of these three tracks, I can just put one on the chords bus and it's gonna affect all of them. It's easy, I use one plugin instead of three, saving myself tons of CPU, and it's just gonna have a better output that way as well. We've kind of learned why you should make buses for different groups of tracks, because it's gonna save you CPU, it's easier to mix in the long run once you have kind of a cohesive mix of that section, and then you can edit the levels from there on each one. But what are these kind of uh, send buses down here? So this B26 and this bus two here. What these are 
is I've created a bus, so a separate track, and it's housing an audio effect. And now what I'm doing with these, uh, what's called a send here, is I'm sending this track to those audio effects, and then I'm deciding how much of that actual track I want to be put back onto the bus here that I'm sending. So for example, the chords bus here, I have bus 26, and this little green dial is something that you can um, kind of change the parameter of here. You can also hold option and click that and it'll automatically send it to exactly zero decibels. So it's going to be a duplicate of that track um, sent at zero decibels. I kind of want it subtle, so I have it down like this. But if I click this bus 26, you can see it come up on the right side here. And that's the input there. So what I have is a space designer reverb and a channel EQ. And I have it just subtly sent to that. So if I actually turn that off, let's turn off bus two as well. Now let's play this track. So you probably can't really tell. If I put these on, there's going to be some subtle reverb that's also added there. But let's just turn this up so you can hear it. You hear how much reverb was there? I'm actually sending it to this Valhalla Vintage Reverb as well as this Space Designer and Channel EQ just to kind of give it some extra texture, some extra flavor, things like that. So let's see if I can find another example here. So the lead bus, rather than me sending both these two to bus number two, I can just put one bus two as a send on the lead bus and it's going to affect both the individual tracks. So what is bus two? So bus two is a Valhalla Vintage Reverb and has the clear chamber preset on there. So if I turn this off, it sounds pretty good, but let's add some reverb to it. It just gives it a little more ambiance, a little more space. It just kind of gives it the feeling that I want to have those leads to have. So that's really useful for things like parallel compression. Um, you can also use, I mean, basically any audio effect and send to a bus from an individual track. And it's useful because you can send to that bus as many times as you like. So for the chords bus, let's see what I have listed as buses. I could send to any of these on any of these tracks. So I could send technically on 30 tracks here, um, I could send to that one bus. So I'm using one plugin for 30 tracks versus 30 of the same plugin for all of those 30 tracks. It just saves tons of CPU. It's easier, it's more organized. It's a better way to do things in the long run. So I wanna show you one more thing organizationally that I think is a really good trick to do. So if you go to Logic Pro Preferences General, and then you go to Audio General, you see this here, Automatic Bus Assignment Uses, and it says Buses Above 24. If you click that, you can also do Buses Above 8 all the way to 128. This is useful because what it means is that every time I create a new bus, so let's just say I'm making a new track here. So Instrument 15, let's say it is an African Kalimba. That actually came with bus 41 and bus 38 there, but they didn't go to bus five and six, as you see. And that's because a lot of the instruments that come in the logic library, which is located here, I'll have uh, buses already preset onto them. If you do that where it was just all buses or after a certain number, these buses will only be added after that number. So when you want to create a bus, you go bus, you have everything, me personally, up to 24 to make your own bus. Because if I'm adding tracks and adding my own buses, it could be like, I do a piano, then bus one and two are taken by the logic preset, then maybe add, I add three, four, five, and then maybe I add another track. Well, now uh, six, seven, eight, nine is taken by the new preset. And it just gets a little bit confusing as to where this bus came from, where that bus came from. This is a really good way to, again, organize your tracks, organize your mixes, and I highly recommend doing that. So one more thing I wanna show you is how to manually set up a bus um, so you're not stuck using track stacks all the time. So let's, for the sake of this, say that I wanted this software instrument and this audio track that I've just added into this, um, this section here. Rather than making a track stack, what I can do is actually change the stereo out. So you can open up your mixer here and you can do something like Control N to make a brand new track auxiliary 20 here, and you can see that the track, the fader is all the way down, and the input is one, two. If I change the input here to bus five, because I know that that one's vacant, and then I'm sending this to the stereo out as well, and then instrument 15 here, let's pretend it's like a studio cellos. Rather than having it at stereo out, I can click that, and I can go bus, bus five, auxiliary 20. And the same thing with the audio effect, let's pretend I have like an acoustic guitar, 
stereo out, bus, bus five, auxiliary 20. And now these two are going to be routed through the output of this auxiliary 20 here, this track right here, that's bus number five. So that's kind of a manual way of how you can add things in and out of that bus. What you can also do is move tracks into buses. So let's say for the sake of this guitar bus here, I'll move it down, that I wanted to add this other acoustic guitar part into this bus. I can actually just click that and move it past the bottom one so that it's kind of in the stack and drop it. And now you see the output is actually routed to bus 39. If I move it back out, you can see that now it's on the stereo out. Um, and if I wanted to move it back into the one with the studio cellos, I would just have to select stereo out and then go back to bus five. So you can actually move things in and out of buses pretty easily using track stacks as well. Or you can just select the output and put them into you know stereo out or a different bus or however you wanna group the tracks. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. And I hope that you'll come back and watch more Logic tutorials that I put out. Thank you so much. It's Tony Holiday, and I'll catch you in the next video, you guys. Take care.